All right, this video is called How to Make a Super Ridiculous Battery Fits in an Ammo Box. Might not look like much, but I've been planning to do this for something like six months. So these are batteries that fit just perfectly inside one of these uh, ammo boxes. This ammo box is called Tall 50 Caliber or something. It's kind of an unusual size, but it is exactly the right size for this battery, which is a one kilowatt hour battery. It's a 24 volt element from a uh, Chevrolet Volt. So these are prismatic pouch cells. Each of these sets here is three pouches in parallel. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, all in series. The individual cells are 3.7 volt nominal or 3.6 or something. So it gives a 24 volt nominal uh, module. And then the plug on top here also has uh, a harness. Like these are the, this is an original uh, Chevy Volt harness pulled out of the battery. This one's actually for a, it's got more wires. This is for a, a 12, for, uh, 12 cell pack, but you can tear these apart and reconfigure them. And then that way you can make something that hooks into that uh, block connector and lets you balance the batteries as needed. Not that these batteries need balancing very often, but if I'm going to put it inside a box where it's really hard to get it out, I'd like to put in the balance cable too. So to do that, take apart the stock connector, isolate, figure out all your Pinouts, just map it with a uh, with a voltmeter. Figure out what all your different cells are, and then combine the Chevy Volt harness with a piece of um, a JST XH. I think they're called. It's the it's just an extension for a balance charger from the RC world, and then make something like this, which is a 6S Chevy Volt harness to 6S 7 conductor JST XH so that I can plug this into my battery and then I have all six of my cells I can run a balance charger on this with the main 24 volt there and that way I can balance it in the box uh, you'll need also a little voltmeter. These are waterproof. They're about four or five dollars a piece. Uh, I also bought these little, um, what are these called? Buzzer alarms. Um, they're from the RC world also. And they let you set a low voltage um, buzzer so that when this battery pack gets down to a critical value, even if the person operating it is not paying attention at all to the uh, voltage displayed on the outside, when it gets to a certain value, the, uh, the buzzer alarm will actually start screaming at them to say, stop using this battery, it needs to be charged. So that seemed like a handy thing. Again, it's about four or five bucks a piece ordered from China. Um, a couple of uh, cable gland connectors that go into the top some heavy gauge wire for the primary, for the power circuit, uh, an ANL fuse and fuse holder. Get a fuse on this as close to the main contacts, as close to the, the connections as possible because uh, you do not want to short circuit these batteries and weld whatever it is that you're touching. Um, Anderson connector, SB175. Uh, this I used as a handy little disconnect between the voltmeter because the voltmeter is on the lid. Uh, thanks Jason for those clever little connectors. It makes it easy to set up. Lugs for heavy welding cable. Uh, charger port being XT60 and a panel mount uh, bracket for the XT60 and that lets you put uh, a second connection so that your charger doesn't have to have uh, a great big expensive Anderson connector on it. Your charger, this is a 24 volt charger, can have 
an XT60, and then clack, voila, now it's plugged in for charging so that the charger could live on board the device that's being powered by this. Uh, or it could be on a shelf somewhere and you bring your batteries to the charger. And same, likewise, the balance charger, in the occasional event where I want to balance charge it, I'll plug the balance charger main in here and then the balance port into the ribbon cable inside. So those are pretty much the ingredients that I used. And uh, oh yeah, the other two pieces that you won't see very well in the box are high density foam and uh, this is some rubberized uh, conveyor belting and what I use those for in concert with um, some big zip ties was I made a, a piece of foam that fit right into this kind of space on the back so that the battery would lie on its side like so. Actually, actually the battery lies on its side more like so with the contacts up but if it's lying on a piece of foam it actually lies horizontally so I made a piece of foam that sits actually in the bottom of here to keep the battery flat and then in order to eliminate the risk of shorts I also put a piece of rubber belting inside the box wrapped around like that so that none of these tabs are at any risk of coming in contact with the box and shorting out so that the whole top of the battery which is the dangerous part gets gets surrounded in rubber so inside it looks like this it's cramped inside there's only a little bit of space and yet there's just enough space to fit everything in. So the blue uh, cable that's running down is the, uh, it's the, the, the balance cable. It comes up and then goes into the alarm, which is always cycling. It's showing each cell in sequence and then all 24.8, cell one, 413, cell two, 412, cell three, and on and on. And then if I click on it once, tells me that it's gonna the alarm is gonna be at 3.6. I actually want it at 3.5. There's a tiny little button on top of it. And so now it's set so that if any one of the cells drops under 3.5, it will start screaming at us to say, go and recharge this battery. So in the top of the case, you can just see the uh, rubber belting wrapping around because all of the that's the business end of the battery it's dangerous. The whole thing is so snug in the box um, there's really no movement. I don't think there's going to be any abrasion but uh, if there is it'll be riding against the rubber and, and foam underneath. Uh, immediately after so this red here that connection is straight on to uh, the positive terminal of the battery and it's immediately into the fuse. And then the fuse on this side goes out to the uh, charge terminal and charge terminal goes straight to negative and then the other power terminal also goes straight to negative. So the two main power connectors go up through the lid of the case but one of them is fused and the LED or LCD uh, voltmeter is here and it can be disconnected if necessary there. So that's it. It just, just fits. I don't know how well you can see, but these batteries just, just fit into these cases. And as you close it, you tuck everything in. And it just, just all fits in nicely. Black. And you get continuous readout. And you get uh, a pretty good solid connection. These are four gauge wire. Um, I've fused it at 250 amps at 24 volts DC. Um, so you could.
power a small arc welder for a, a short while. Um, we use one of these to run a pallet jigger and we don't run it steadily all day but you'd have to run it for a couple hours to, uh, to run down this battery. So I'm optimistic that there will be a lot of things that we can do with these, uh, these power bricks, as I'm calling them, because it's a lot of energy stored. And uh, the whole thing is about, I think they're about 10 or 11 inches tall by mm, 6, 7 inches, something like that. How wide are they? 6 inches wide. 10 tall, 12 on the long axis, they weigh 20 pounds, and there is one kilowatt hour of stored available energy, and uh, it works out to like 42 amp hours at uh, 24 volts, something like that. So it's enough, uh, it's enough energy to run a, like a small three-wheeled forklift for for a couple hours, probably, it's uh, it's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of energy storage. It works out to um, uh, the equivalent in lead, uh, at least from the point of view of our pallet jigger, was four uh, sixty-pound six-volt batteries. So this is a big improvement, being the size of it's one fourth the volume and one tenth the weight. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping to build other tools to to go with these as a as a portable power source. Oh, and the the ammo cases are nice cuz they are totally waterproof. So as I punched holes in the case, I also sealed things as I put them back in so they're they're silicone back in. They should be relatively uh water waterproof. I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't throw them in the lake, but uh this is what the ammo boxes look like empty. And uh they also have hinge that slides apart and the lid is removable. So there are some good plastic cases uh, that are similar size but they didn't turn out to be any cheaper and these are really tough so I'm looking forward to seeing how well they last. If I can uh, learn more I will post more.